right guys, how's it going? It's Ben and as promised, I'm going to do a gear breakdown for this upcoming Great Lakes salmon and steelhead season. So as you guys know, it is nearing the end of summer here in the Great Lakes region and fall is quickly approaching. Um, leaves are already starting to change, the nights are getting cool, and most importantly, the water temperatures are starting to drop. And as Great Lakes anglers, we all know that means one thing and that means all these salmon, steelhead, and all these other salmonid species are gonna start making their yearly spawning runs into the tributaries and rivers that connect into these Great Lakes. So I was getting my stuff ready the other day for the uh, season, and I thought to myself, why not make a gear breakdown video just to kind of detail what you guys may need if you guys wanna go out there to uh, catch these salmon and steelhead and kind of what I use to do this. Um, you know, it's kind of a, it's a, kind of a funny thing because these fish physically are pretty big, they're fast, they're strong, so you need heavy gear. You need heavy enough gear to land these fish, but at the same time, they are notoriously picky fish, whether that be because of angling pressure, because of low, clear water, or because of high sun, or other weather variables that you really can't control. So you kind of got to teeter this line of finesse, but just enough power you can land these fish, so uh, it's kind of a weird thing to play with, so I'm hoping that I can provide some clarity for that in this video, and I'm hoping that you guys could learn something and take something away from this video. So without further ado, we will get into it, and I'll start off with uh, rod and reel setups just because it's, it's a nice, easy thing to start off with, and it's very, very important for these fish in my opinion. So first of all, I will start with my fly rod setup. Now, I really don't fly fish a lot, but there are times where you're fishing short, fast runs, or having a fly rod is, it's integral almost. It is so helpful when you're fishing those short, fast runs and you wanna keep the same amount of line out, you just flip that line back out, make that drift, flip that line back out, make the same drift over and over again. Now for that, I use an 11 foot six, eight weight Cabela's TLR switch rod. Um, that is paired with an Orvis Batten Kill. This is a four, this is the Spay model, but it is a disc drag. Uh, the reel is indestructible. And uh, this has the Rio uh, inline switch chucker on it. And this is a switch line. It's a very thick line. And the reason it's thick is because it's heavier. Um, well, it's thicker because it's heavier. And that gives it the ability to turn over those bigger floats or indicators, those, you know, heavier split shot, heavier flies. It really gives you a very easy turnover to flip that line back out there. Now with this rod being 11 foot six, eight weight, it's a switch rod. It's pretty big rod, but um, I think it's really nice to have this switch rod because it gives you that extra length to control your line really well. Um, and this, this little butt, I know it's meant for two end casting. I use it for that sometimes, but it's nice to fight fish with it too. Um, and even though this rod is an eight weight, I have caught steelhead as small as three or four pounds on it running six pound leader. It, this rod has cushioned that leader very well, but at the same time, I use this rod to catch you know, almost 30 pound king salmon running 10, 12, 14 pound test leaders. And this rod just puts the work to it, brings them right in. So this is a really solid setup. Uh, I highly recommend having a fly rod in your arsenal because of those times of fishing, those short, fast runs where you're gonna be doing repeated casts, having the same length of line out every time. And uh, sometimes it can just be super fun. And um, yeah, so I definitely recommend having a fly rod in your setup. And that's why I have a fly rod in my setup in my arsenal, I should say. Now to move on to the more conventional side of setups, we have a center pin. Now, this is the center pin you guys see me use in all my other videos. This is a 13 foot, six to 10 pound rated Rain Shadow RX-8 blank. Now, it's built uh, by Mags Custom Rods. They make incredible rods. This rod is like build quality. I've, it's, it's the best performance. I've had zero issues. This is paired with a Kingpin R2 475, and 475 basically refers to the size. It is 4.75 inches, or four and three quarter inches, and uh, this reel is spooled with 12 pound Hytena chromium. It's just a it's just a 12 pound monofilament line, and that's the that's what it's called. But um, in case anyone isn't familiar with a center pin, what is a center pin? A center pin is a reel that has one bearing in the middle, you know, just one straight rod through the middle and it spins off that bearing. Now, why does it spin freely? That is because um, you usually stand at the top of runs. So with the fly rod, you're fishing these short, fast runs. 
but with the center pin rod, you can stand at the top of a long, deeper run. I can cast my float 10 feet out from me, and I can just let my reel spin, and that float can go 50, 75, 100 feet down from me. And with this extra length on this rod, it being 13 feet, you can really control your float well, because you're fishing a float, you're fishing a bobber with weight under it to your presentation. So you really can control where that float's going. And even when you're 75 feet away and that float goes under, you have 13 foot of rod to lean back and really get a good hook set and pick up all that line with that long rod. So I think it has become a lot more popular in these years. And I think there's good reason because it really is an effective way to put the presentation in the water and uh, control your presentation and get maximize your drift. Um, this rod in particular, I really use for a lot of steelhead and brown trout because it is in that six to, six to 10 pound rated line uh, range. Um, so it really cushions that six to eight pound test leader really well. I can bend this rod to the cork with six to eight pound leader and I know that leader is not gonna snap. Um, that's, that's really why I like this rod for that. But also with that being said, I have fished 10 to 12 pound leader on this for king salmon and you can get them in. It's not the best for it, because it's lighter, but it works. So it's just, I really like the versatility and the, um, the more so than the versatility, the how you can really get those long drifts out of a center pin. That is the center pin's clear purpose is those long drifts. And um, yeah, so this is a really good rod to have in the setup. And uh, from there, we'll move on to the third and final setup, which is a spinning setup. Now, I usually do not fish spinning setups. I really never have in the past for salmon to steelhead in the Great Lakes. But uh, last year, a friend of mine, Rob, that I fished with, um, a lot of you guys probably know him as Chiefs, his YouTube channel on here. Um, he exposed me to fishing spinning reels for these fish because he highlighted a good point uh, with the center pins and these like longer, little flimsier rods. When these fish are fresh, when these fish are in tight quarters, you really can't put maximal drag on these fish with heavier leaders because you're using your hand. So that's why a lot of times in those, that time of year in the early fall or maybe into the, into the fall, he uses these spinning rods uh, with the spinning reels because you can you know adjust the drag, really crank that drag up when using the little bit heavier leaders and you wanna really maximize your drag and maximize your uh, line strength on these fish. Um, with a little bit of a um, beefier reel to you know, have more drag, I have a beefier rod, and that is a G. Loomis E6X. It is medium heavy, 10 foot, and it's an eight to 17 pound uh, line rated rod with a Shimano Stratic 3000. And just like the rod and reel, the line is a little heavier too. It is a, a 40 pound braid. It is a Suffix 832 braid, um, and that has a 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon top shot, about 15 feet of that. And the reason I use a heavier braid, that 40 pound braid, is because the thicker the braid, the better it floats. So when I'm sending floats down river with this setup, uh, with, you know, like I said, with the center pin, you have a big float, you have split shot, you have your presentation. When I'm sending that down river from me, I want my main line to be floating because that maximizes my drift and my presentation. On top of the um, floating ability of the thicker braid, it's also easier to mend. So if I'm floating down river, my line's kind of bowing out, I want to straighten it out. With that line being thicker and heavier, I can lift my rod, kind of lay that line straight. And that's easier to do with this um, thicker braid. Now, another reason I really like the spinning setup is because it is versatile. I can float fish with it. I can bottom bounce with it. I can you know, throw lures on there and cast lures. Whatever the fish are keyed in on, I feel like this is a good setup and you can adjust to that accordingly. On top of that, um, it's a good setup for big water. Uh, you know, fishing the Niagara River like we have in the past. I'm gonna be using this in the Niagara River this year to see how this does on that bigger river. Because there are times where I've hooked fish on that river and I'm palming my center pin up. I just can't do anything. And having this drag system, I feel like is gonna be a lot nicer. So I'm really excited to use that. So now that we've kind of detailed over the rod and reel setups, so you get the fly, the center pin, and the spinning setup, you really cover your all fronts of your Great Lakes salmon and steelhead. Um, like I said, you got the you got the short, fast runs for the fly rod, and then you got the long, deeper runs with the float for the uh, center pin rod. And then 
right here you kind of have your jack of all trades, a spinning rod. You know you can float fish, bottom bounce, cast lures, and it's a little bit heavier for those uh, fresh fish in tight quarters. Um, so that's kind of the three main rods I'll have with me on every single Great Lakes trip that I do this year. Now, to move on to our terminal tackle hooks, baits, beads, every all that, uh, this is my fish pond. It's a little hip pack. It's totally waterproof. I'm going to go over what I keep in here. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to go over my terminal tackle and my tackle that I keep in my hip pack here. Zip it open. <clears throat> Once you grab the first thing I see, we got leaders. So I use Sunline FC Sniper. This is a 100% fluorocarbon line. And one of the reasons I really like to use this FC Sniper is because <clears throat> it is exactly as advertised. And what I mean by that is this 10 pound test line is a diameter of 10 pound test. And that sounds really redundant, but you'd be very surprised. Um, a lot of lines, you know, say they're a six pound test line and guys are like, wow, these lines are so strong. But when you look at the diameter, it's actually the true diameter of a 10 or 12 pound test line. So you're really getting a thicker, more visible line that advertises as a thinner line and guys like it because it feels stronger. But these FC sniper lines are as advertised. These are, you know, 10 pound with a 10 pound diameter. This is an eight pound with an eight pound diameter, 20 pound, 20 pound diameter. And that's kind of a nitpicky thing that, um, that I'm kind of pointing out. But the reason I truly like this line is its performance, super high abrasion resistance, high breaking strength. And, um, it is really invisible under, under the water, like fluorocarbon is. And I carry, like I said, eight pound for a lot of steelhead and trout use, 10 pound for, you know, salmon. And, you know, if I have fresher steelhead coming in, I'll use 10 pound. And this is 20 pound for the top shot section on that, um, you know, a 15 foot top shot section on my spinning reel that I connect to the 40 pound braid. That's what I use for leader. And uh, we'll go into some terminal tackle here. We got some start here. We got some weights right here labeled according to their weight, of course. Uh, we'll start here at the top. These are weights for bobber dogging. And that is a style of fishing that is, you know, meant for your, your bouncing bottom with a float. That's, that's, we won't get super into, but that's what that is. And then we have three different size split shot. We have the 0.4 gram. These are, um, S, these are BB. And then we have the 1.8 gram, which are SSG. And then we have the 0.75 gram, which is AAA. And someone gave me that tip a while back to just, you know, keep it simple. Stick to three sizes. You'll know the weights. You'll know what weights you have to put on if you lose one. And, you know, when you're fishing those floats, let me grab you a float out of here real quick. Fishing these floats, that's an 11 gram float. This Hawken uh, fixed float right here. I want to match the amount of weight I have under it with the gram rating. So that's 11 grams. I want to get 11 grams or close to 11 grams of weight to really balance that float so I can detect bites better. And this is just kind of like my, um, you know, swivel, swivel box. And I have some float tubing in there. Got my swivels in there. Um, I use 35 and 50 pound swivels and that sounds a little heavy, but um, it's, you know, you don't, want ta you don't want terminal tackle failure and they're really not that big. So it's just good to have. Then I had this little box with my, you know, bead pegs in there for pegging beads. And speaking of beads, this is my little bead box I carry for the day. And the only reason I only have six in here is because, um, you know, I don't want to carry every single bead I have. You know, you usually have an idea of what fish want. So you put six of your best in there, pack it in there for the day. You peg them with these little rubber pegs on the line. Now from there, we have my hooks. Hooks are super important to me. Um, we have our little Fish USA <coughs> hook box, and these are all Van Fook hooks. Van Fook is a brand I work with. It is a super high quality uh, Japanese uh, fishing hook brand. And um, as you can see, these are all Van Fook hooks. Um, they have different sizing in Japan. So um, for the equivalent, I have hooks as small as 10 or 12, 
and I have hooks all the way up to around <coughs> size one or two in the American sizing. And um, I'm actually going to link the um, you know link below for these hooks if you want to buy them for yourselves. Like I said, I would highly recommend them. I think people kind of overlook um, hooks because you know you just want people want a strong hook, but the problem with a strong hook is it's thick and it doesn't get good hook penetration. These hooks in particular are a <clears throat> they, they're a strong steel, but they're forged. So they are made thinner, so they have good hook penetration and they have good strength. So, like I said, very, very, very high quality hooks and I'll recommend them and I'll leave the description below for you to get some. And then I have a little pouch in here with floats. Got some floats, 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 you know, got some extra hooks in there, all that. But really that's, that's uh, most of my day pack. I don't, I've, over the years, I try to pack less stuff because <clears throat> leave space in there. Then I can put all my camera gear and my phone and all my stuff in here. I don't have to carry, you know, two or three bags to fit all the stuff I need. So that's really nice. And as you can see on the front, we have our line nippers and our pliers for getting hooks out of fish. And then just on the side, we got a little flashlight and it goes, has a UV mode as well. So I use this UV mode in the morning, kind of cool, <clears throat> to see what beads glow best. And as you can see, those beads, they kind of glow in that light. And whatever bead seems to glow best in UV seems to perform best for me in the morning. Because UV is, I don't know the science behind it, but that is what happens. Um, now that we did that, I'll go over the backpack I take to hotels or wherever I'm staying that I leave back in the hotel. This is a bit cumbersome and I'll go over it quick, but in here I have <clears throat> extra leaders, extra main lines in case I run out of line. I have, you know, indicators for my, my fly rod. We got flies for the fly rod. We got um, extra beads. Well, we have a lot of those extra beads, you know, for filling up that day box, extra beads. And there's another box, extra beads. And then we have slip floats for when I fish in the big water, like the Niagara. I have my box of fixed floats. And then last but not least, I have extra terminal tackle. So extra swivels, you know, look, just extra swivels, extra hooks and stuff. And kind of what I do is I take this backpack up with me and, you know, before I go out for the day, I see what I need in here. If I got to grab a few more beads and put in my little box, if I got to grab a few more floats, throw it in my bag, you know, a leader spool, throw it in my bag, just so I don't have to carry that whole extra backpack. And uh, <clears throat> it's really nice. You kind of have an inventory back at your place to kind of choose from. So that's really nice to have. Um, and we'll kind of get uh, into some other random things that I have on me when I fish on the river. So now we're going to get into the section. This is just some accessories that I have with me on the river. Um, I have a waiting staff with me because, you know, we make some sketchy crosses and it's really nice to have that extra stability sometimes, especially in higher flows, deeper water. You, know, you can stick this down there. This can extend like that. You know, you can stick this down there and really have sure footing. And then really important to me is a good net. Um, you know, you have these big fish, these awesome fish you want to take pictures with and, you know, take care of more importantly. Um, it's really important to have a good net. Uh, this is an extendable McLean. It's a sea trout net. It's a double XL size. So it's a 19 by 24 hoop, but I put a Ranger, uh, PVC coated netting in here. And this PVC coated netting is just really easy on those fish's uh, skin and scales and keeps the slime on the fish. It's, it's really important to have good fish handling, um, you know, tools in your arsenal. And that's why I really like this PVC coated net. You know, you're taking care of the fish. It's big and wide. You can kind of sit the net fish in the water like that. It doesn't freak out. It's nice and deep for that as well, but really good net. Um, just nice to have and really cool little feature is it has a scale. So you can hang a fish in that bag, pop that right there and you can weigh the fish. And uh, shout out to my girlfriend for getting me this for Christmas. Uh, it's just awesome net and it's really good to have. 
All right, so now that we've gone over the rods and reel setups that I have on the river, the uh, hooks, the swivels, the beads, all the terminal tackle, the accessories like the net and the walking stick, um, that's pretty much <clears throat> all the stuff I have with me on these trips. And I just kind of wanted to go over, a, you know, a brief overview of what I take on these trips. Um, let it to, to, you know, let it be a recommendation or a guideline or whatever, whatever it is. I hope that you guys are able to get something out of this video. Um, if you guys want a more detailed breakdown of, you know, rigs, um, exactly how I use everything in my tackle arsenal, I can definitely do that. Um, just, you know, like the video or maybe drop a comment on like, uh, if you want, you know, more details, just say details. But, uh, like I said, I really, really appreciate you guys watching at this point. Um, we're gonna get some good videos out this season. We're going salmon fishing here in the next couple of weeks and um, hopefully we get on them. Hopefully we get a cool video out there. But um, like I said, really appreciate, you know, like, comment, share, hitting the bell. Uh, really appreciate it guys. So hopefully uh, I see you guys in the water as well this season. So uh, take care guys, God bless, and we'll see you next time.